to start with um, a little jingle. I don't know if you've heard it, but uh, our Earth sits in the universe for, in terms of we're not too close to the nearest light source, yet we're not too far. We're just close enough to our nearest star, which gives us light, which is the sun. And so that light, which is perfectly situated, gives us the energy to drive all our systems on Earth. If we were too close, we'd be too hot. If we were too far, we'd be too cold. But we're just in the right spot in the universe. And the Earth actually just intercepts one, one billionth of that light energy, just enough to sustain us and keep our Earth at a constant uh, 58 degrees Fahrenheit average. And that's just so perfect that it's it's really quite amazing that just that much energy, just a small amount of that light that has been given to us is enough to sustain all our external Earth systems, which are all interconnected. So without one, the other one doesn't work. Or if without one that may be slightly damaged, another system has to come in and try to resolve what well, is deficient, mm. and I, that's similar to what we as humans on Earth are doing. We help each other if one is down, and we give ourselves to that person. So that light energy from the sun is driving all our perfect systems to work in order. And if something is out of order, then another system comes in to take its place and help out. But I like to start with the position of the sun and that different, that different energy that we receive is is unequally distributed spatially across the globe and the earth systems make that work they're used to this inequality and so we as humans wherever we visit on earth or wherever we are we have to adapt just as uh, everyone else before us have adapted to different environments whether it be cultural religious economic political physiological physical climatological biological so For me, when I start teaching, I always talk about the importance of that energy. And if we can't understand, we have to understand that before we can move on. And so we take it for granted that that Earth is rotating right now, and that the sun isn't rising or setting, but the Earth is rotating, and we're intercepting just a little bit of it, enough to sustain us. When the energy enters the sun, and we think of our, uh, enters the Earth, we think of the Earth as an open system. So it takes the energy in, it uses it, and it gives it off as heat energy, which we call thermal energy, which is enough to keep our planet at a constant 58 degrees Fahrenheit average throughout the year. So for instance, sun comes in, it heats our Earth. In the lower atmosphere, that generates energy for photosynthetic processes to take place. But we, because without, without photosynthesis, you can't have plants producing carbohydrates and starches to be used for our primary consumers and our, and our secondary consumers. And we know about herbivores and carnivores, etc. So that starts the life cycle. Without sun, we can't have photosynthesis. Without photosynthesis, we can't have green, healthy vegetation and food. And that, that begins the system. Also, without the sun's energy, the byproduct of The opposite of photosynthesis is respiration, which is also giving off uh, oxygen and uh, water, which water is uh, very important for life as well. So without the water, you can't sustain life. And so the sun begins the processes there with photosynthesis and then the opposite of respiration. So we have heat energy and water, which produces food. And without green, healthy plants, we don't have oxygen. Without oxygen, we can't breathe, or any of the animals cannot. And then from that, then you have the processes of weathering and mass wasting on rock and minerals. So that produces uh, nutrients for our soil, 
for plants and animals to survive and humans to use the earth to grow crops. And then it's all interconnected. And that energy also stimulates the biological processes of the nutrient cycle and the carbon cycle and the energy cycle for bacteria and the mitochondria, etc., to survive and to sustain us. first hear that, let there be light, that opens my eyes. You can see. So you can see what has been given to you. Um, secondly, I think of, oh, you put the sun up there, our nearest star, that can give us this light, and that light is energy. So that, that came later. When I, when I first hear about light, I think of opening my eyes, and wow. See, but when I think of let there be light, I think of opening the eyes, seeing what's been given to us, and you have the ability to look and sense and see what's out there and make use of what has been given to you. Uh, it's not till later, when uh, when I got older, that I realized for me, let there be light was more. Wow, well, I put the sun up there, and and that's actually energy to sustain us on Earth. So for me, it has twofold meaning.